William Pender. Here. Charles Sawtell. Here. Jeb Stewart. Yep. George Custer. Yep. George Pickett. Here. Robert Holliday. Yep. James Longstreet. Yep. Carl Rader. Yep. Philip Sheridan. Yep. John Hood. Hey, Jeff. Take a look at this saddle sore. You think that's serious enough to report? I don't know, George, but I'm certainly going to report mine. <laughs> you boys can have the cavalry. Me, I'm going to apply for the infantry. I'm tired of playing housemaid to a temperamental mayor. <laughs> That's the first good news your horse has ever heard. Go on, Gertrude, kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> You weren't so hard-headed, hey. you wouldn't hurt your mouth. I told you before we started, you had that curb chain on too tight. It's not the first time you've cut his tongue. You ever tried putting a curb on your tongue? No. Nobody else ever tried it. <laughs> I suppose it takes one of you southerners to handle a horse. Well, at least we know how to harness them. You know how to harness Negroes down south, too, I hear. With a strap across their back. Come on. <laughs> When are you going to take a punch at him? Uh-uh. Too close to graduation. Besides, if I've waited four years, I guess I can wait another week. The breaking up of the American Union, as it now exists, is the basis of my plan. And that destruction must be made upon the issue of Negro slavery and on no other. The Union must then be reorganized on the great principle of emancipation. This object is vast in its compass, terrifying in its prospects, but sublime and beautiful in its issue. A life devoted to it would be nobly spent or sacrificed. If the federal government and its constitution are opposed to my way of thinking, the fault is not mine, but theirs. And I shall continue to oppose them with every means and every weapon at my disposal. Who wrote that inflammatory rot? A wise man by the name of John Brown. Where'd you get it? That's my business. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. You meant it for me, didn't you? Take it any way you like. Sure he meant it for you. He tried that abolition stuff on me until he found out I came from Kansas. Never mind, Bob. Come on, Jeb. Let's turn in. There's no regulation against a cadet having his own ideas. But there is one against spreading treasonable policies. You find the truth hard to take. Hmm? Listen, Raider. I know the truth of this problem far better than you do. The South will settle it in its own time and in its own way. But not through the propaganda of renegades like this John Brown or any of his followers. You mean that renegade line to include me? Look up your oath of allegiance and answer that for yourself. I'll answer that right here and now. I've taken a lot from you southern snobs. For 50 years now, you've been watering your precious family trees with a sweat of Negro slaves, piling up wealth and snobbery until now you think you own the government and the army. And anybody who disagrees with you is a lying renegade, a rabble-rousing traitor. Will you get this from me, Stuart? And all you other Mason, Dixon, plutocrats, the time is coming when the rest of us are going to wipe you and your kind off the face of the earth. Jim, don't be a fool. No, but don't fight it up. Hold it, Raider. Jim, Jim! disturbing force has been active among the regiment of cadets. The exact nature of this subversive campaign and the persons responsible for it have not been fully known to us until this moment. Stuart, by every rule of the academy, you should be discharged from the service, and your associates are no less guilty for their part in this outrageous affair. Colonel Lee, any blame in this matter is entirely upon me. 
my sole responsibility, sir. That's not quite true, sir. It was my fault. We're all equally responsible, sir. That's right, sir. That's right, sir. If I believed that you were guilty alone, Stuart, I should have sent for you alone. As for you, Custer, and the rest of you, you must be taught that lying to protect a friend is sometimes an extremely dangerous practice. I'm not so greatly concerned about the fight itself as I am about its cause. All seven of you men violated the first sin of military conduct, the traffic and violent exchange of political ideas, which are not the affairs of an American soldier. You must be punished, and punished severely. I shall request of the War Department upon your graduation next week that all of you be assigned to the most dangerous branch of the United States Army. The second United States Cavalry, now stationed at Fort Leavenworth in the Kansas Territory. <clears throat> That's all, gentlemen. You're dismissed. Now send for Cadet Raider. <laughs> How can you beat that? Fort Leavenworth, suicide station, Kansas, and the Santa Fe Trail. What a piece of luck. That's it, and the cavalry, active duty, promotion. Why, we'll all be generals while the rest of these fellas are still shaped. Oh, that's desolate country, Jeff. Nothing grows in Kansas but trouble. What are you talking about? I grew up out there, didn't I? Well, I suppose he's not. Oh, yeah, what like I get you boys out there? Man alive, that's my stamping grounds. <laughs> <laughs> These pamphlets were found in your quarters, dozens of them, together with a letter written by a member of the abolitionist party instructing you to distribute them among those cadets who appeared to be sympathetic to their cause. How long has this undercover activity of yours been going on? Long enough. Very clever idea of your fellow conspirators to plant an agent in our midst. Your dishonorable discharge will be drawn up at once, and you'll be given until sundown to remove yourself and your personal belongings from the limits of West Point. Good. You can tell Mr. Stewart from me that he'd be smart to stay in the Army, right in the middle of it from now on. Cadet William Q, Ohio. Cadet Martin Evans, Ohio. Cadet Armor Marlow, New Jersey. Cadet George Custer, Ohio. Cadet James Longstreet, South Carolina. Cadet Philip Sheridan, New York. Cadet J.E.B. Stewart, Virginia. Cadet John Hood, Kentucky. Cadet Robert Holliday, Kansas Territory. Cadet Jason Wood, Virginia. Cadet George Pickett, Back Virginia. That's my sister, Kit. I thought two Cadet years James in Boston Cook, would make a lady out of you. Kentucky. So did I. It just popped out. Cadet William Keel, Ohio. Cadet Robert Davis, New Jersey. It is now my great honor and privilege to introduce the Secretary of War of the United States of America, the Honorable Jefferson Davis. Officers and gentlemen of the class of 1854, their welcome guests and their very proud families, I'll not keep you separated very long as I myself once sat in your place and endured an interminable address by a very tiresome general. <laughs> But as a secretary of war of this nation, I have a serious obligation towards each new officer of the army before he enters into active service. And that obligation is to make clear and definite his responsibility to his government. We are a new nation among the powers of the world. Just 80 years ago, we were fighting desperately for our freedom, and we're still fighting to keep it. We are not yet a wealthy nation, except in spirit. And that unity of spirit is our greatest strength. You men have but one duty, one alone, America. With your unswerving loyalty and the grace of God, our nation shall have no fears for the future. 
and your lives will have been spent in the noblest of all causes, the defense of the rights of man. Santa Fe so long now, Mr. Holliday. Surprised to learn it hasn't even been built. Well, that's not our fault, Stuart. You can't build a railroad over blood-soaked ground like Kansas. Decent settlers won't use it. We're losing thousands of pioneers to the Oregon Trail. We heard about the raid at Awesome Water Me last week. What is the true situation out here, sir? Well, uh, Kansas is a territory and not a state. We are ready to join the Union, but the big question is whether we'll go in as a slave state or as a free state. On one side is most of Kansas pro-slavers, people who came from the South. On the other side are the abolitionists led by John Brown and his sons. Between those two elements, they've made Kansas a boiling pot of rebellion and massacres. That's why the Army sent you boys out here to Fort Leavenworth. Say, suicide station. It's quite an honor. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, will you, sir? Surely. You know, the first time I saw you at the graduation, I thought of what Napoleon said when he first met Josephine. What was that? He said, I never knew this savage land they call America could breed such perfect beauty in mortal form. Thank you. That's a lovely line. Yes, isn't it? George has been using it for years, haven't you, George? Oh, I wish I could think of nice things like that to say. You wouldn't like what I'm thinking now. Uh, you were going to tell me something more about Kansas. Yes, what do you do on Saturday nights for fun here? Well, as I remember, half of Leavenworth takes a bath and the other half gets drunk. And since there are only two bathtubs in town, things get kind of exciting around midnight. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how'd they ever come to name you, Kit Carson Holiday? Well, Mr. Carson and my dad were very good friends, and they were so sure I was going to be a boy that they named me before I was born. Oh, I see. Well, I'm certainly glad they were wrong. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Conductor. Yeah? What are you going to do about that? About what? I'll tend to that. Hey, I thought I told you them Negroes had a ride in the last coach. Their tickets give them the right to ride wherever they please. Now, I don't want any trouble with you, mister. Then you better leave us alone. Well, I don't know what this country's coming to. Pickets! Stop shaking, Anna. There's nothing to worry about. We're only a half an hour from the border. If we don't hurry, they'll be across the border. All right, go ahead. taking the Negroes. What business is that of yours? We're asking the questions. Are they free or bond? Here are the papers. You can see for yourself. 
Yeah, that might mean something if we didn't know who you are. Now, don't you make a move. We're taking you and them off of this train while they're still in Missouri. Now, come on, get up, all of you. what they mean when they call it bloody Kansas. There'll never be any peace along the Santa Fe Trail while John Brown or any of his followers are alive. Terminal. I propose to come down here to Wichita. Then along here, across the Arkansas River, along the Cimarron River, over here to Las Vegas. Then on into Santa Fe. Now, that'll be our first section of track from Leavenworth to Wichita, right over the trade. How soon do you figure to start? Well, the men back east say they're ready to put up the money as soon as we can prove that a railroad through Kansas is safe and will pay. Sir! Yes, kid? Where'd you put the loading list? List? Gosh, I clean forgot to make one out. That's great. 98 tons of freight ready to roll and no orders for loading. How'd you run this business while I was away? That's why I sent you away, to show you what a skirt was. Look at your clothes. Look at the grease on your nose. What would your friends in Boston think of you now? Frankly, Dad, I don't much care. If you're gonna keep your nose in a paper railway, I better keep mine in the family affairs. Tex! Wendy! Tex! Where are those orders? See Lily when I said goodbye to her. Oh, now don't start lying to me, you double crossing buzzard. I know you didn't buy that there looking glass to see your own ugly mug. I suppose you're thinking on wearing that female cinching belt. Wait till Lily sees what you brung her. She'll brain you if it ain't physical impossible. Why, you ignorant. Tex! Hey, you two! Where in the name of. Will you come here? Hello, Hello Miss Kit. Kit. Hello, nothing. Are you gentlemen of leisure by any chance interested in employment? Uh, we lost our watch. Yeah, we didn't have no idea of time. I ought to give you both your time and throw you out. Where in time have you been? Well, uh, you see, we had to buy these knickknacks. Well, we sort of got a gal in Santa Fe, Lily, uh... Hofstetter, and what do you mean, we? I'm engaged to her. Well, who ain't? <laughs> you set up housekeeping in Santa Fe, or is this just, uh, gilding the Lily? Oh, uh, she wanted us to fetch her one of them fancy French looking glasses. Ain't it pretty? What's your answer to that, Tex? <laughs> what are you laughing at, you long-eared jackasses? <laughs> Go on, get to work, both of you. Go on, jump to it. You better hide that thing or start wearing it. I'm going to put you new officers straight from the start. This is Fort Leavenworth and not West Point. You were sent here to man a frontier garrison. Three of the officers you're supposed to be replacing are buried back of the hill in the little military cemetery. The other four haven't been found yet. The Regiment of Mounted Rifles has only one job, to keep the peace in Kansas. And we're here alone. There's no other fort between us and Santa Fe. And we're proud of that responsibility. We've got a tough reputation in the Army, but they respect us in the West. 
See that it stays that way. Order of the day. Lieutenants Longstreet and Holliday take B Troop and put them through close order drill. Lieutenant Stewart and Custer will take eight men as an escort for the freight caravan leaving at noon for New Mexico. Draw the usual supplies and report to me for final orders. Say, will you keep all those cases of Bibles near the tailboard? They're only going to short haul. We sure will. <laughs> Let's go. Hot boy ready, sir. We're ready if you are. Good. I hope you have a nice quiet trip. On any other kind, I'll lose money. Oh, we'll try and save you that. We'll see you in six weeks, sir. With luck. Just keep your eyes open, boys, and move fast. You'll like the scenery, but don't trust it. All right. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Stuart. Goodbye, Custer. Two men to cover each wagon. Yes, sir. Bill, move all these valves over there for the next line. Right. Well, hey, looks like we both got the same idea. Looks that way. How are we going to work it? Here. I've got an idea. That's draw point. Fair enough. Right. I got the long one. Hey, wait a minute. Where I come from, long man loses. Tough luck, old man. Yeah, hold my horse. One hand bar, one cedar, seven eggs, 15, 12, and 14, and... Why, Joe, there's something missing. Must be me. Hello. Hello, what are you doing here? Oh, playing nursemaid for those wagons. Should be the other way around. Oh, the convoy. That's a silly idea, Dad. He thinks that man John Brown's behind every bush. Well, it's not that I mind so much. It's being away from you for six weeks, just when we're getting started. Started? Where? Uh, look, I've only got a few minutes left, so I've got to be fast. You haven't been exactly slow for a couple of days. It never sees such a pair of whirlwinds as you and George Custer. Oh, George. Poor old George. Well, never mind about him. Look, kid, I might as well tell you before I go. I'm completely crazy about you. What? Uh, no, wait a minute. Let me finish. I needn't warn you about army life. The pay is bad. I'd never be home. You'd probably be a widow in two weeks. I see. Have you thought of any particular names for the children? No, be serious, will you? This might be the most precious moment in our lives. I hope not. Not in these clothes. Haven't you got any heart at all? Yes, I have. And it's going to stay right where it is. I don't know a thing about you, Jeb Stewart. My brother thinks you're wonderful. But then he was dropped on his head when he was a baby. Well, at least you'll let me kiss you goodbye, won't you? Oh, well, it's quite an honor, but no thanks. I, I don't really deserve it. Well, hello. Say, this is quite a surprise. The corporal's looking for you. He says it's very urgent. Mm -hmm, I'll bet. Kit, we'll take this up later, right where we left off. Now, George, don't be long-winded. Listen, Kit, we're due to leave in a minute now. There's something I've got to tell you. I'm head over heels in love with you. George, you sound just like an echo. Oh, Kit, uh, pardon the interruption, George. Oh, man, Kit, there's something I forgot to ask you. Have I got any real competition? How do you think any girl would answer a question like that? Well, she'd tell me the truth. Then you'd both be crazy. Get going, you bullwhackers. Through desert heat and dust, your throats will soon be choking. Your head's about to bust. The water when you're thirsty. And all you get to eat is aromatic antelope with sun-baked buffalo meat. Yes, we are! We may not even live to get our pay. But even if we don't get paid, there ain't, ain't no, no job we trade for hauling freight from state to state along the Santa Fe. Yeah, hauling freight from state to state along the Santa Fe. If we are there's trouble right with us all the way. Do you think over what I said, kids? Every word. Take care of yourself, George. Don't worry about that. Goodbye, darling. Those two boys? I'll give you three to one. I can name the winner. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Which one do you want? I'll take that bet. Good.
instruct all volunteers not to enter Kansas unequipped, nor to display their weapons to public view. Let that be understood beforehand. Warn them also. Not so fast, Father. Warn them also that our plans must be known to ourselves alone. That they join me in the clear knowledge that all traitors to the cause must die, wherever caught and proven to be guilty. Tell them that we stand by one another while a drop of blood remains, that under no threats or pressure do we make confessions. All right, that's our camp. I might as well tell you, when you get this far, you don't turn back. You don't have to worry about us. We ain't the kind of quit. That's fine to see you keep it that way. Save all of us a lot of unpleasantness. You've been delayed. Was there trouble, Raider? No, sir. We had to detour when we got to the border. I picked these new men up from Palmyra. Volunteer, sir. The other credentials. From Illinois. You've come a long way. And we'll go the rest of it. We came here to fight slavers. The sooner the better. That's good. We'll put you to work at once. Kitzmiller, look after these gentlemen. Fine. This way, boy. Let him go where it was. We've received the news we've been waiting for. We break camp, Raider. Yes, sir. Let's start tearing down these tents now. What has happened to you? Where are the Negroes you were told to bring? A couple of pro-slavers tried to grab us on the train. I shot one of them and jumped off. You left four helpless people alone to save yourself. I had to do it, Father. It was me or them. You cowardly fool. In the future, obey my instructions. We leave at once. Once you sent the ravens to save Elijah, so now you have delivered into my hands the precious means of continuing thy holy work. The Lord our God is a great God, a mighty and a terrible who regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. The Lord is a man of war. Thy right hand shall become glorious through power. Thy right hand, O God, shall dash in pieces the enemy. Tired. When are we going to make camp? Oh, as soon as we cross the river, and then we'll be out of danger from both sides. You know, Lieutenant, I'm sure glad we're leaving civilization. It's getting too dangerous for a peace-loving man. I run into some of them abolitionists once, but who's this fellow John Brown that talks so much about? Oh, as far as I know, he's just a dirty old windbag. In fact, he's just your type. Either of you ever meet him? No, but two of them fellas he killed at Osawana me were friends of mine. You mean Jim Doyle and Alan Wilkerson? Yeah, and that's the reason I'd sure like to meet up with this year, Mr. John Brown. He's got no quarrel with people like you, Tex. You'd do much better to leave him alone. Well, you can count me in anyhow. Even if he ain't harmed no friends of mine, I sure'd hate to miss a good fight. That's right, sir. My name is Smith, Jonathan Smith of Newton. Oh, well, what can we do for you? 
I believe you are carrying some freight consigned to me. Oh, it might be. Have you got something to show for it? I have this receipt from the shipper. Come a long way with an empty wagon, haven't you, Mr. Smith? Newton's about 100 miles from here. My home is in Newton, sir, but my place of business is much closer to the trail. Oh, I see. I thought your horses looked pretty fresh. Ain't cases of Bibles. That's right. Come on, Wendell, we'll unpack these Bibles for the parson. Jason, bring up your wagon. Get that cart down. I got to get them Bibles unpacked for the parson. That's a funny thing. I've seen that fellow somewhere. That's the way it seems to me. It isn't the kind of a face you'd forget in a hurry. No. Wait a minute. I know. In some magazine. The Atlantic, I think. Well, then he's either from Boston or he's a missionary. Not for something else. Been a lot of bad trouble over across the river lately, Mr. Smith. That murdering skunk John Brown's on the loose again. Better keep your eye peeled for him. Thank you. We shall. This stuff sure is heavy for Bibles. How would you know? You ain't never even saw one. Ah. See those Bibles. There you are. Put your hands up and keep them up. your gun. Bring up the other wagon. Now then, quickly with those other crates. All right, get a move on there. Only the ones marked Bibles. Hey, Chip, look. Our friend Raider. Well, this is a surprise. And a commission in the cavalry, too, huh? I see you've got the commission you were after. Do you know these men, Raider? Yes, sir, very well. This one, Stuart, comes from a rich slave-owning family in Virginia. He called you a lying renegade once, and I jumped him for it. John Brown, him? John Brown? John Brown? I have nothing personal against you men, but I will deal harshly with any interference. I might have known you'd wind up with this outfit. Well, that's one of the troubles with the Army, Stuart. They don't teach you to think ahead. They do one smart thing. They teach you never to turn your back on an enemy without first making sure he's harmed. Stop this. We will not saddle ourselves with a killing just to satisfy your personal quarrels. One more murder won't mark you any deeper than you are now, Mr. Brown. I intend to be a marked man. Back to your horse, Raider. Back to your horses, all of you. I've given you fair warning. You can keep your heads or lose them as you wish. Move on. Cases, George. What? Contraband, rifles, and ammunition. Gosh! Then we've been delivering Bibles with triggers on them. Let's take a chance. Everybody, take cover and open fire. Dismount! Take cover! Makes you nervous, don't count them. Come on. Everybody mount and follow me. Everybody mount. Come on, Shave Tail. Here's where I get your medal. Forward!
couldn't help it. I didn't do anything. All right, son. Nobody's going to hurt you. Who are you? Jason Brown. Brown? You one of John Brown's sons? Yes. Yes, but I never did anything. He made me go along. I never killed anyone, I swear it. I'm getting out. I'm quitting. You've got to take me with you. All right. Bring a horse up, George. Bring up the horses. I'll have to carry him back. The boy's badly hurt. It's his father's madness really striking home now. Sheriff, there's a purpose behind that madness, one that can't easily be dismissed. George, you've seen the needle on a compass, haven't you? It's got a whole car to swing around in, but it always wobbles back to the north. What are you driving at? Just this. I've always known where your sympathies lay. It never affected our friendship, and it never will. But it isn't our job to decide who's right and who's wrong about slavery, any more than it is John Brown's. I guess you're right, Jim. I'm sorry. That's more doggone fun than I've had since we got hemmed up with them engines. Yeah, well, the next time we shoot at a common enemy, you let me do the shoot. Boy, my gun is as dry as a powder horn. <laughs> Get up! You busted Lily's looking glass. When she looks at herself in that, she'll think she's a hundred years old. Or more. Of course we're aware that firearms are contraband in Kansas. Do you think we'd have accepted those boxes as freight if we'd known what they actually contain? Well, I'm just asking, that's all. Doesn't it seem strange to you that Dr. J. Boyce Russell, the most prominent religious leader in America, should be sending rifles marked as Bibles to John Brown? How can I control the marking of crates? We once received three tons of gunpowder marked birdseed. Well, then you'll have to examine every crate you haul. What? For all we know, this contraband may have been slipping through for months. Jason, listen, son. You've got nothing to be afraid of if you'll be honest with us. Now, I want you to answer my question truthfully. Did your father ever mention this shipment of rifles when he discussed his plans? Not to me. He never confided in me. Just Fred and Oliver. Fred and Oliver? My brothers. Where are their headquarters? I don't know where they went. They have a dozen places. I... I don't know. I don't know. All right, kid. Don't worry about it. Guns are no mistake. Anyone with the best interests of Kansas at heart can tell you that. No bandy-legged bushwhacking soldier can talk like that about the holidays. We've got as much interest in Kansas as the United States government, and a darn sight more investment. We were here before the army came, and by Godfrey, we'll be here when you're gone. If you think you can... Sir. Well, Stuart, what did you find? Very little, sir. The boy's either too badly hurt or too frightened to talk. We leave immediately. Have them sound assembly. Yes, sir. What was that you called me? A gall darn bandy legged bushwhack. Now go on. He says he talks with God at night. But God doesn't tell people to kill one another, does he, miss? He's a he's a good man in a lot of ways. But he's changed since Asawatomi. Those people he killed. They got down on their knees and begged him for their lives. And he struck them with a sword. Him and Raider and Kitzmiller. I was there. I saw it done. I tried to stop them, but they pushed me aside. Yes, that's how it was. We're starting at once. I'll take the first troop west to Tecumseh. Stuart, you and Custer will take the first platoon of B Troop and search thoroughly from Clinton to Dutch Henry's Crossing. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. These are your orders. Find John Brown and bring him back here, alive if possible. His force is well armed now and strong in numbers. We also suspect that new volunteers are drifting in from the east to join him. Be on the lookout for them as well. Retire to your respective troops. What's that? They've caught some more of us. No one's been caught chasing. Not even you. You've committed no crime to be afraid of. I'm sick of being afraid. I'm sick of hiding like a hunted thing. I want to walk free like other people. You will, Jason. You're safe now. No, I'm not. 
Not as long as he keeps killing and thinking that he's right. He can't be right, can he, miss? I don't know. His reasons may be right, Jason. They may even be great and good reasons. But what your father is doing is wrong, terribly wrong. And he'll keep on repeating that wrong as long as he lives. Then, then I'll never be free of him until one of us is dead. I know that now. My life don't mean anything. But if he dies, maybe this whole scheme of his will die with him. I'd rather have it that way. His life, even if he is my father, against many thousands. I'm going to tell you where to find him. Oh, Jason, I'm not trying to... I'm going to tell you anyway. In the house of Shubal Morgan, Palmyra. That's where they went. That's their headquarters. Tell the soldiers. It's better that way. His life against many thousands. Jeff. Hello, darling. How is he? It's very serious. I left the doctor with him. Poor little devil. Jeb, he told me everything. The whole nightmare of his 15 years, even the place where his father is now. He said he wanted me to tell the soldiers. Where? Palmyra, at the house of a man named Shubal Morgan. Shubal Morgan, Palmyra. I wonder if that's the truth. Jeb, I'm frightened. That boy is crippled for life. And that man on the train, he died for a principle. And a man killed him for a principle. One of them is wrong, but which one? Who knows the answer to that, Kit? Everybody in America is trying to decide it. Yes, by words in the East and by guns in the West. But one day, the words will turn into guns. Oh, Jeb, can't it be stopped now? Can't the slaves be free before it's too late? It will be stopped when we hang John Brown. Then the South can settle our own problem without loss of pride at being forced into it by a bunch of fanatics. Oh, Jeb, what has pride got to do with human lives? Kit, the two things kind of come together down South. Can't pry them apart, not even with guns. I hope that's going to be the same way with us. Uh oh, that's me all over, clumsy Custer. Or can I get into this too? Yeah. Sure, sure. Looks like you're in on it. Don't miss much, do you? Now, I've seen you work before, son. That's where I learned. Just credit one more to my account, kid. I like to let the interest accumulate. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, George. Kid, I... Don't be long, Jeb. No, no, goodbye. Goodbye. Kid, remember this, will you? I love you. Put that in your little bonnet and keep it there until I come back. I'll remember. Goodbye. Hi, Lieutenant! Hello, boys. Hello, Lieutenant Jeb. Sir, I want you to keep an eye on Kid for me while we're gone, will you? Heck no, we're going to hunt John Brown with you. What? Yeah, we come to join up. Who do we see? A couple of flat-footed rumpots like you in the army? Why, you'd get lost. Boys, you better go home and sleep it off. So long. This high, Tex Windy brought home a wolf cub with a broken back. You nursed it for weeks, but it finally died with its head in your lap. You cried for days, but it was just a wolf cub 
would probably have grown up to be a killer like his father. What has being flat-footed got to do with riding a horse? Calling me a rum pot's what hurt me. I ain't had a drink since noon. Not the way we get them. Look them over and stack them in the barn. Yes, sir. This looks like the best shipment we've had yet. Yeah. Wonder what Raider's worked up about. Him and the old man been arguing for an hour. Looks like another job for us if Raider thought of it. West Point education's a wonderful thing. Yeah, if you can collect on it. Yeah. I signed up because you promised to pay me. Train this rabble gang of yours to a solid, fast-moving unit of fighters. Taught them how to use these new rifles, how to follow orders. Take a town in army fashion. But I haven't received a red cent in three months. Now, what about it? Mr. Raider, I enlisted you on the recommendation of friends in the East who said you would work for the cause. You've done your job well. I have no complaint up to now. But our plans are ahead of any personal greed. If you feel otherwise, you are free to get out. But you must decide here and now. I want only loyal men around me. You've no argument with my loyalty. I proved that at Osawatomie and every other town we've raided. But you hired me as a military expert at a set price, and I'm only asking what's rightly due me. And I say that you'll receive it in time. Only let me think in peace. My son is a prisoner in the hands of our enemies. Even now, he may have a rope around his neck. An innocent boy who never fired a gun in anger in his life. While I stand here powerless to save him. All right, I'll wait. Well, what's our next move? The Bible is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Tomorrow at daybreak, we will destroy Delaware Crossing. You sort of turned us down, too. But here we are, Lieutenant Jeb. What do you mean trailing us halfway across Kansas? Well, we don't want you to get lost. You see, I know every wrinkle of this here country just like my own fate. Well, you're sure that's just as dirty. I've got a good mind to get a couple of mules and strap you on the back and send you home. A fine-looking pair of soldiers you make. Well, all we need is some of them pants and a cap. And then, of course, if some soldiers just our size gets killed, why? All right, get back to the end of the column. Go on, before I get that mule. We don't have to obey no orders. Since we ain't in the army. But we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Kit hears about this. She'll skin him alive. That's if they've got any skin left. Who did this? John Brown. 
How many men did he have with him? Around a hundred, maybe more. How long since he left? Three, four hours. We lost count of time. Well, you're the man that had to run in with one of the Browns on the train. Is this in revenge for that? Yes. We're free staters here. Brown always knew we'd get him someday, if he didn't get us first. Well, I'll leave you some men to help you bury your dead. Let's see you back to Leavenworth. We don't want any help. This is our fight. We don't want you or nobody else to finish it. I'm going to take care of John Brown myself. Get on your way, soldier. We got work to do. I know how you men must feel about this. But my orders are to break up all armed forces, yours, John Brown's, or anyone else's. I'm sorry, but if you organize under arms, I won't be able to draw a line between you. That suits us, if it's got to be. Miller. A troop of cavalry from Fort Leavenworth are headed this way. Aren't fools. Jubal, we're moving camp. Round up all your men. Get the wagons ready to roll. Just food and ammunition. We're traveling light and moving fast. What about the Negroes? We can't take all of them. We're not taking any of them. I promised you would come. I am leaving Kansas now to continue God's holy work. For Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as God had said unto him. And it was so that he did it by night. And when the men of the wicked city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down. Please, Captain Brown, what did that mean? What you gonna do with us? means that you are free, the first of many millions to whom I shall give freedom from slavery. Does, does just saying so make us free? How we go live, get food and shelter? There are many good people in Kansas who will give you work and protection. From now on, you must fend for yourselves, as other free men do. My work here is done. Praise God. Glory, bless God, we're free. The captain didn't keep his word, we're free. We're free, we're free. You know, if John Brown has 100 men, we'd better send a runner back, bring up the rest of the troop. Better do it tonight. I'm going into Palmyra, George. You alone? Don't be crazy, Jeb. That town's full of Jayhawkers. They'd shoot you on sight. Well, I'll have to take a chance on that. I'm going to get some other clothes, take a couple of men, and go in and do some scouting. I'll try to send you back word. Good luck. Say, do you two fellas still want to join the army? Huh? I've got a job for you. There's no picnic. It's pretty dangerous, but I think you're the fellas for it. What do you say? You mean we're going to have a real cap and a uniform? Well, we might have to be buried in them, but it sure sounds like a deal. The law's got nothing to do with it. We came here to join John Brown because he's a leader and a fighter. The whole thing's going to be settled right here in Kansas. We came here to fight slavers, didn't we? The only way to fight them is with guns! Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> sure give you a good looking over in this year, man's town. Yeah, I feel just like I was taking a bath in the bathtub without no sides on it. The only kind of a tub you ever was in. Say, who could I talk to in this kind of a town without arousing suspicion? The town barber. That's right. Anytime a barber can't talk to a stranger, he's liable to go crazy. Town barber, hmm? That's it.
Howdy, boys. Howdy. Howdy. Pretty good looking horse for this part of the world. Yeah. Kansas is all right for men and dogs, but it's pretty hard on women and horses. <laughs> Say, look at that brand. That's an army horse. Maybe you just bought him from someone. No, they don't sell him. Nobody rides that brand but a soldier. You keep your eye on him till I get back. You still got that creepy feeling about this place? I don't know whether it's that or these here chiggers, but something's creeping over me. Why don't you scratch and see if it goes away? Yeah, I reckon that is all it was. Say, I got it now. We was on the same train a couple of months ago when that fella got killed. Uh-uh. You probably got me mixed up with somebody else. No, sirree. I never forget a face. <laughs> Although I was a little drunk at the time. Well, they are. The fella you saw probably had two faces. Been in Palmyra long? Oh, just a couple of weeks. This ain't no time for barbers. The fellas that ain't trying to hide their faces for some reason or other are too mean to spend the money. <laughs> yes, I've heard you've got some pretty tough customers here. Tough, say. I'm afraid a shave half them, afraid they'll get up and cut my throat. <laughs> Say, did you ever run across this famous, what's his name, John Brown? Sure, he came in here once. Strange looking man with a hemp mark on his throat. Hemp mark? What's that? Oh, it's an old barber superstition. A, a little red line that runs all the way around here. Anybody born with that mark is bound to be hung. That's so. Uh, say, I haven't got one, have I? Not yet. Maybe. Well, well. Keep your hand away. Get it. This was quite an idea, Stuart. You're coming in alone first to look around. Or is this one of your agents? I ain't never laid eyes on them before. I swear it, I, I don't know him from Adam. What were you up to? Well, it's your move. You figure it out. My next move is plain enough. Didn't they teach us how to handle spies when we caught them red-handed? Same treatment for renegades, wasn't it? When you catch them. This will make you quite a hero, Stuart. The class of 54 will turn out in a body for your funeral. They may even hang your picture in the West Point Library. That's worst places to hang. Get him out of here, Red, or we're wasting time. Just having a last few words with an old classmate of mine. And I had them coming to me. Uh -oh. Come on, get up. We're going to give you a good look at what you came to see. We can't afford to take chances, sir. He was sent here as a spy. It's my advice to get rid of him. Let's train up. Yeah, and right away. Wait for him. What did you hope to achieve by coming alone to Palmyra? The Army has orders from Washington to bring you to trial. I hope that if I came face to face with you first, a lot of unnecessary bloodshed might be avoided for your men and mine. Were you innocent enough to think that I would surrender myself to you without a fight? I hope that you might consider yourself innocent enough to do that. Half of the people in America believe in your theory. A lot of them even condone your methods. That'll guarantee you a public trial. I'm not on trial, but the nation itself. Are you too stupid and blinded by a uniform to see what I see? A dark and evil curse laying all over this land. A carnal sin against God. It can only be wiped out in blood. But why in blood? The people of Virginia have considered a resolution to abolish slavery for a long time. They sense that it's a moral wrong. And the rest of the South will follow Virginia's example. All they ask is time. Time? Time? For 30 years, I've waited for the South to cleanse its soul of this crime. Since childhood, I have been possessed of the fire of correcting this wrong. I tried peaceful agitation. As God is my witness, I tried. Peaceful means failed long ago. Now I shall force a decision by bringing both sides into armed conflict. Letters, words, talk, the time has ended for that. Strength and action are wanted now. 
Not a voice crying in the wilderness, but a David, armed with the power and the glory. David had a son, hadn't he? A son? Yes, Absalom, who deserted his father and went over to the enemy. What are you trying to tell me, Stuart? An Absalom died because he feared his father. Jason was dead. So be it. My son has paid for the sins of this world with his life, as once did the Son of God. It shall not be in vain. Whether you kill me or not, the army will crush you all in the end. My advice to you is to find peace with your maker. Now the big one. Sit down. I never liked barbers know how. Now spill out, you little bitty rum weasel. I'll cut you a throat. Where'd he go? I swear I don't know, boys. I think, well, they have taken out that way. Who took him? The, the three fellas. One of them was Oliver Brown. <laughs> See this razor? Well, I'm keeping it. And if you move to hair when we get back, I'm going to strap it on your liver and barbecue your carcass. Now, you stay where you are. Back east for me. you all together as witnesses to hear my words. An enemy to the cause has entered our midst stealthily and by night with the purpose of planning our destruction. But the hand that has never failed us has come once again to our protection. It's not with malice or revenge that we take this man's life, but in just retribution as befits all enemies of mankind, all enemies of God. Ready, sir.
fight on, John? That's the longest breath is in me. Found the charge! Tight, Manny. Don't tell me how to do this, boy. I've been wrapping white folks all my life. When they was babies, I wrapped one in. And when they growed up and took on too much corn liquor, then I wrapped t'other in. All right. Then what made you leave home? Well, old John Brown said he's going to give us freedom. But shuckins, if this year cancels this freedom, then I ain't got no use for it. No, sir. Me neither. I just want to get back home to Texas and set till kingdom come. Yes, sir. Fall out. Well, we had a nice ride, both ways. Lost him, huh? He and a few others got away in the hills. I think I hit one, Jeb. You ought to heard him holler. Heard him holler? You jughead! That was me. You shot my hat off. Well, it won't matter much. He's broken for good. From now on, he'll find every man's hand against him. Nothing will ever break the force of John Brown, Jeb. Not even death. Oh, you're wrong, George. He's finished. His force is broken forever. Why hast thou afflicted thy servant, O Lord? Wherefore do I not find favor with thee? Why hast thou laid the weight of all his people upon me? Yes. This is a sign for which I have waited, O Lord. This is your command, the burning boy. Let there be no peace in all this land until we have revenged ourselves upon thine enemies. As once you smote the Philistines, smite now the fury of thy wrath upon these blind, misbegotten fools. And I shall be thy right hand. I, John Brown, shall be the sword of Jehovah. Gentlemen, the beginning of the railroad to Santa Fe. These rails are going to stretch their way right across the old trail, right over Kansas, down into the territory of New Mexico. Someday we can tell our grandchildren that we open the doors of America to the great Southwest. Won't we, kid? You just build your railroad. I'm not guaranteeing anything. <laughs> yep, the end of John Brown was our beginning. Maybe it'll cost a lot more blood and grief, but it's going to be worth it. Dad, can I ring the bell on the first train? Yep, and blow the whistle. That'll be a day you can live for, oh, kid. Oh, won't it? <laughs>
Thanks. That was excellent. I didn't recognize the song. Where does it come from? It's an old army song, a farewell. These young men have all been promoted and are ordered back to Washington. That's splendid. You lucky devils. I had to wait 10 years for my captaincy. And I also followed tradition by proposing to my wife the same night. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you like some refreshments? Yes, I would. Splendid idea. Well, I think I'll run down to the stable. Horse throw a shoe this morning. I'll see you later. I'll go with you. Maybe I can find it. What did you have to go and lie for, telling the Major we was the best barbecues along the Santa Fe Trail? Well, I just mentioned it sort of casual. How'd I know he's gonna take us up on it? When he starts eating this. <laughs> he won't take us up, he'll take us up and out. You think it's gonna be hard chewing, Tex? Well, I don't know. I still got a hunch. We should have skinned it first. We took the horns off of it, didn't we? What is it, Captain's pay, Jeff? Thirty-eight dollars? Uh-uh, forty. Forty a month. <whistles> Say, that's enough to get. Go on, get what? Well, you know, this and that. What are you planning to do with your extra pay? Exactly the same thing as you are, son. Want to draw straws? Not this time. This means too much. Well, how are we going to handle it, then? Take turns? I don't trust you southern boys in the moonlight. All right. Let's ask it together. Hey! Wait a minute. What is this, you loser? Come on, don't argue. Well, just come along and listen. There you are. George has got something to ask you, Kit. You have the floor, George. Well, I don't know just how to start, Kit. But there's an old Indian woman who hangs around the fort and tells people's fortunes. She's supposed to be a wonder at it, and, well... Yes, George? Well, she said I'm going to get married soon to a very beautiful girl. Did she, George, this very night? Pretty slick opening remark. Kit, were you ever by any chance a blonde? Why, no, not even as a baby. Are you sure? This old woman's never been wrong before. Absolutely sure. Well, maybe she's still right. There's a whole lot of beautiful blondes in the world, George. Let's ask her. Let's. Wait a minute. Kit, are you in love with him and not with me? I guess I am, George. You're going to marry him? Oh, wait a minute. I can handle this proposal from now, Sam. Kit, you really mean that? You haven't asked me anything yet. I wonder if I said the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have been more perfect. Now, where's that Indian? Hmm. What's she saying, Kit? You know the lingo. She says that this is one of the last times we'll all of us be together as friends. <laughs> <laughs> now ask her something sensible. Who's going to be the first general? When is Tom Wanigan? She says that one day you'll all be famous men. Great in battle. But bitter enemies. What? <laughs> Pickett, Hood, Custis, Sheridan, Longstreet, and me, enemies? Now I know she's crazy. Where'd you ever pick up this old figure, George? I can tell better fortunes than that with tea leaves. <laughs> well, we might as well get our money's worth. Ask her what we're gonna fight about. Yeah, who's going to start it? Well, what's this? Too ridiculous to tell? She says the fight has already started. Somewhere in the east, a man is lighting a torch. Now, at this very moment, the two of us will help to kill him. But none of us can stop him. <laughs> Here is where I would attack first. 
The arsenal of Harper's Ferry. Give me only a hundred good men, Dr. Russell. Well-armed and God-fearing men who believe in the cause. I will lead them through Virginia. Rouse the thousands of discontented slaves who will flock to join us. Then sweep down through the South, through the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. Then, with the entire nation in a state of chaos, we can dictate our own terms. Have you considered the army, Captain Brown? Surely they'll be after you in full force within a few hours after you first attack. Let them come, Dr. Russell. Let them try to stop me. I've studied that country for years. It's full of good hiding places, natural forts where large forces of brave men can defy pursuit indefinitely. Mr. Raider will go ahead of us and scout the town. Yes, sir. With his knowledge of military methods and our great advantage of surprise, we can outwit the army at every turn. Captain Brown, this plan of yours is mad, worse than mad. It's high treason. Such a brazen attack would lead to civil war. Exactly. That is exactly what I want. Is it your wish, then, to destroy the Union? My answer to that is yes. To the devil with the Union. We've got to fight sometime. It might as well be now. Gentlemen, I came here to Boston at great personal risk. There's a price on my head of $10,000, so my time is precious. You've given me much help and encouragement up to now. But all that we have done in Kansas and elsewhere will be wasted. Unless you see it through to the glorious end. How much money will you need? We now possess the guns, ammunition, tanks, a complete store of supplies. The place in the hour is set. Harper's Ferry, daybreak, Monday, October the 16th. We will strike with two forces, suddenly with complete surprise, and then move rapidly through Virginia. You men all know what will be demanded of you. Yes, well, will you, Captain? Yes, Captain. It's Raider. He made good time. Well, what did you find? Speak up. Is anything wrong at Harper's Ferry? Well, the town itself won't be any trouble. There's a bridge of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad to be blocked, and we've got to cut that telegraph line to Washington. What about the government arsenal? It's guarded by only two men. Here, I made this rough map of the place. Good. Excellent. This is precisely what I wanted. We must first take some hostages from the town. That'll prevent an attack by the civilians. Then we'll move directly on the arsenal. Now, there's something else. What? I want to settle our account. Back in Kansas, you promised to pay me what's due when you got the money. How dare you demand the settlement of a private matter? With the nation's hour of deliverance, not three days off. Well, that's putting the cart before the horse, isn't it? I've done a job for you nobody else could do. So I was right at Palmyra. The cause itself means nothing I'm to me. I'm only holding you to your word. Are you indeed? Have you forgotten so quickly my methods with disloyalty? I haven't forgotten anything. But you've got the money to pay me, and you can't afford not to. Then add this to your memory. <laughs> I haven't waited 30 years to bargain with a rogue at the final hour. She wants to go right out on them again. Oh, we're the fellows who cleaned up Kansas. Ain't you ever heard of us? Sorry, sir, but we don't need no cleaning. Good evening. Of my life. Yeah. You don't know any girl here at the kitchen, huh? I'm not talking. 
Maybe you don't rate quite as high as you think you do, Captain Stewart. Hello, kid. You look wonderful. Thank you. Say, George was just telling me you promised him the biggest night of his life. Where do I come in? You don't. I'm very fond of George. Thank you, kid. I haven't told you this, but we have a deep understanding. Wait a minute, kid. Are you serious? What is this? I'm going to take care of George for the rest of his life. Kid! That is, he's the man I think he is. Oh, kid, I have my faults. But I can be as faithful and loyal as any man that ever lived. I'll soon see. Now, wait here, both of you. Tough luck, son. I guess we can't all have charm and good looks, too. Custer, I hope you're joking or you're not gonna have either. Oh, don't take it so hard. I mean, this is something that could happen to the whole. <laughs> Charlotte, I want you to meet Captain Custer and Captain Stewart. This is Charlotte Davis. We were schoolmates together in Boston. It's a pleasure, Miss Davis. Thank you, Captain. Well, yes, indeed, a great pleasure. I've heard so much about you, Captain Custer. Me? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh... Well, that is, uh, I mean, uh... Well, uh, well, that is, uh... uh Shall we dance, Jim? Yes, of course. Who is she? <laughs> That's the blonde. The one that George was promised by old Sid in the mud. Oh, I see. Well, it's pretty nice. Don't you think? Left wheel. Company. Halt. Present. Arms. Prepare to scoop. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, about base. Company forward. March. Eyes right. Right wheel. Well, there I was, right out in the middle of Kansas, facing 500 crazy fanatics, heavily armed. And me with only 15 soldiers. Good heavens, Captain, how terrifying. What did you do? I sized up the situation at a glance, dismounted, and walked straight toward him. Not, not alone. My dear young lady, there comes a time in every soldier's life when he must stand or fall alone. And if you knew the Army, you'd understand that he who hesitates is lost. Oh, how simply wonderful, Captain. Oh, it was nothing, really. Will you come and meet my father, Captain? Oh, I'd be delighted. Is he in the government service? Yes, but I think he'll lose his job in the next election. Oh, that's too bad. Say, he should be in the Army. You know, politics don't bother us. He'd rather go fishing anyway. Father. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Trevor Lee. Hi, dear. Father, I'd like you to meet Captain George Custer. Oh, but of course I met the captain at West Point when he graduated, didn't I? Yes, sir. How are you, Custer? I'm fine, Colonel Lee. We've heard good things about you. Congratulations. Yes, the captain's just been telling me how he put down the trouble in Kansas by himself. Splendid job, pile man. Oh, splendid. Wasn't there also a chap named Stuart, uh, Jeb Stuart, connected with that campaign? Stuart? Uh, yes, sir. He was around. Shall we dance? Already. I don't want her, I want you. Come on. Here, you can't leave me stranded alone in the middle of a ballroom. Quiet, Sprint. Phil, Phil, take over this detail, will you? Oh, may I? Oh. Are you drunk? Well, if I'm not, I ought to be. I've just seen enough to knock anybody down. What are you talking about? An old friend of yours is outside, and he asked me to bring you to him. Maybe you're right, but maybe I've got something to tell you that'll change your opinion. 
You'll have a hard time doing that. Suppose I told you that I left John Brown three hours ago with a well-armed force of men, not very many miles from where we're standing. I'd say you were out of your mind. All set to strike at Harper's Ferry on the Maryland-Virginia line sometime tonight. With reinforcements of over 1,200 men expected before daybreak from Pennsylvania. Brown plans to arouse the slaves. First in Virginia and then throughout the South in open rebellion. The telegraph wires will be cut and he'll block the railroad. And then at daybreak, they rush the arsenal. Take thousands of weapons with the idea of arming the Negroes. Well, that's the situation, gentlemen, move for move. I don't know, you may be able to get there ahead of them, but if you do, you've got to move fast. Tonight. It's fantastic. Our Secret Service has reported John Brown to be out of the country. Well, I ought to know where he is. I've been with him every day and every mile since we left Kansas. Then why have you informed on him? Don't forget, Colonel, I was in the service once. I was young and I made a mistake. I didn't know that then, but I do now. I guess some of the things we learned at West Point stay on inside of us a lot deeper than we realize. Anyway, I couldn't stand by and see my country torn apart by a madman like Brown. I had to come here. This was something a lot bigger than myself. Couldn't have been the size of the reward you'll get for turning him in, could it? I said why I came here, and that's the truth. But I am entitled to any reward. I'm even willing to go back there and rejoin him tonight, just in case he gets suspicious or changes his plans. Now, what more proof do you want than that? I believe in because it's too dangerous not to. How soon can you start, Colonel? We'll be ready to leave in an hour. The officers are all here. Call in at once and proceed with all speed to Harper's Ferry. Do you have your orders, Captain Stewart? Yes, sir. Jeff, what is it? What's happening? John Brown. Get the little Davis girl to take you home, will you, darling? But why? But... I'm sorry, I can't explain now. No time. Try to keep the others calm. Tell them there's nothing to be excited about. Goodbye. Goodbye. say no train is due until well after daybreak. No, sir, not until 8 o'clock. I rode within 10 miles of Washington to make sure. What kept you so long? I had to take a side road both ways. Ugh. Schubel, Townsley, get your men, block the railroad bridge. We meet below the arsenal at daybreak. Kitz Miller, go to the town with 20 men and get the hostages. You know the ones? Yes, sir. Rest of you men, follow me. Pennsylvania will be here within the hour. Now, this isn't an arsenal, it's a fortress. We could stand off the whole army here. What about the prisoners, Captain? What is the meaning of this outrage? Why have you broken into our homes and dragged us here? Who are you? I am John Brown of Kansas. John Brown? You are prisoners of the provisional government of the United States. If the citizens of Harper's Ferry attempt any interference, I shall use you as I see fit. Otherwise, you will be peacefully released when we depart. We must adhere to our schedule to the precise minute. We will leave here at 10 o'clock. By nightfall, we should be 35 miles into Virginia. What about the men from Pennsylvania, sir? They're late in arriving. We cannot wait. Wouldn't that be taking a long chance? No word of us can leak out until tomorrow, maybe even two or three days, and then we'd be 1,500 men. I don't see that there's any reason to hurry. That sounds sensible. I disagree. I'm anxious to get out of here, and time is our most valuable weapon. Uh, you're in command, sir. But that's been the fatal mistake to many an expedition. My advice is to wait. shotgun. 
bombs. We can clean them out in five minutes. Idiots. Why do they fight us? Can't they understand? What is your name? Brewer. If you value your life and those of your fellow townsmen, you will do as I say. Yes. Stop firing! You are endangering the lives of your friends! John Brown promises that if we leave the arsenal in his hands, he will harm none of us. No! Bring down dead! We'll cover you! Quick! They understand we're here in a righteous cause. Their interests are also ours, the good of the whole nation. We'll leave a lesson at Harper's Ferry for the rest of the South to profit by. Wipe out those fools at the foot of the hill. <laughs> you can carry with speed. It's well past noon. We can wait no longer for the Pennsylvanians. Eighteen citizens of Harper's Ferry killed, 33 wounded by John Brown's invaders in open rebellion. It's from the second force at Frederick, Maryland. The road to Harper's Ferry is blocked, unable to get through. Jefferson Guards and the Winchesters under Lee's command passed through Upperville an hour ago. They will be the first to arrive at the ferry. What are you watching, Raider? The North Road, sir. The North Road is over there. This is the Washington Turnpike. Well, I thought our men might circle the town as That they was not their orders. Help with the wagons. Yes, sir. But don't you think we ought to wait another half hour? It might be that... to take this under a white flag to John Brown. Right, sir. There's to be no parley. Yes or no? If it's a refusal, wave your hat to us. Right, sir. Hang on to this, will you?
John Brown of Kansas. I am. We've met before, I think. And thanks to Mr. Rader, we now meet again. This is Colonel Lee's formal demand for your surrender. Once more, sir, you overrate your strength in supposing that I can be taken against my will. That's your final answer? It is. We prefer to die here. Prepare to surround them. Take troop B to the right at a gallop. Troop A to the left at a gallop. Troop C, throw your carbons.
this. I'm not crying for him, Jed. I see something else up there. Something much more terrible than just one man. Have you any last words, John Brown? I am only walking as God foreordained I should walk. All my actions, even the follies leading to this disaster, were decreed to happen long ages before this world began. But I cannot remember a night so dark as to have hindered the coming day, or a storm so furious as to prevent the return of warm sunshine and the country at peace. I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land can never be purged away but with blood. I let them hang me. I forgive them, and may God forgive them, for they know not what they do. such enemies of the Union, all such foes of the human race. For this continent, and there to have given and pledged their troth each to the other, and have declared the same by giving and receiving a ring and by joining hands, I pronounce that they are man and wife, united forever with ties that no man shall break asunder, nor the years disturb, whose shining paths shall run together from this day hence unto eternity.